Welcome, my dudes. How are you doing? You know, this is gonna be a super chill combo, like not stuffy at all. Everyone can express their opinion. It's well, it's well, no prob, no prob. I mean, we all hate classism, am I right? We're all buddies here, okay? And that's why in my company, we listen to everybody. Don't think about this as a lecture or a big seminar or anything like that. We're just pals having a chat, okay? No biggie. So, does anybody have any cues? Hello! Hello, yes, I have a question. I read your book some time ago and I don't really agree with... Well, regarding your concerns, I must simply respond with a sincere statement. The societal and individual norms of this institution clearly state that out-of-place emotional displays can and will not be tolerated. How is that relevant right now? I don't think that was at all an inappropriate emotional response. I was just... Please, address this speaker with respect. You may take a seat in one of these medically approved chairs and stop obstructing the course of this seminar. I'm so confused. <laughs> Welcome to Drama TM, a place where girls may take so hot they could replace blankets. Today, we're going to be talking about academic speech and terminology and the role as gatekeepers for important conversations. If you haven't watched my previous video on meritocracy, don't worry. You don't need it to enjoy this one, but it could be a cool compliment, so maybe check it out later if you're interested in the topic. Now, what exactly do I mean by academic speech? Well, if I may take a guess, I would suppose that complicated language bothers you because you do not understand it. Or to put it simply, big words make you boohoo! Am I right, boys? This is definitely the wrong energy for this conversation. We all know that language is influenced by context. I don't talk to my family the same way I talk to my friends. And I don't talk to my friends the same way I talk to my boss. And that is not necessarily bad. Language is a fluid thing. Over time, we shape the way we communicate with others in specific contexts. There are tons of language-related psychological and philosophical investigations, like just speech styles or Wittgenstein's language games. This is because the way we speak is both fascinating and incredibly complex. So now, my problem is not that big words make me boohoo. My problem is that those words are specifically designed to leave me out of the conversation. That is obviously a lie. I cannot be blamed for your lack of knowledge or intellectual abilities. It is not my fault that you're not on my level. Oh, really? Then do you won't mind me analyzing our little chat? By all means, go ahead. There is absolutely no proof that what you're postulating is true. You're the one who's gonna sound crazy, am I right? Okay, first of all, at the beginning of the conversation you did not sound formal. At all. It was not until you got challenged and felt threatened that your speech changed. And it just changed when you were talking specifically to me. By doing this, you're hoping to create two separate groups. One inner group in which you can be chill and breezy because the required knowledge is assumed and one outer group, me, that is just not smart enough to get it. By picturing me as a dumb outsider, you can make sure that my opinion is treated as just not worth listening to. And what's with the calling vocabulary to intelligence anyway? Hey, 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 hey. I never said you were dumb. I just said that you're too emotional and don't know what you're talking about. Ooh, emotional! Yeah, I've had that one before. It's a tricky one. Does it have to do with the fact that I'm too invested to be objective or the fact that I'm a woman? Because both of those are widely spread manipulative arguments. If it's related to the first one, what you're saying is that someone who is personally affected by the topic and doesn't speak like a robot should not be talking at all. In other words, if you don't approve of my tone, my wording, or my body language, you can deem me as irrational. Therefore, again, invalidating my opinion without having to listen to the arguments. And if it's related to the second one, there's a lot to unpack. For starters, 
women have been seen for ages as the weaker sex, driven by their emotions and incapable of logic. This is why still today there's a double standard regarding the way we speak. More than once I've had a friendly discussion with a guy at a party turned into a full-out academic debate minus the timer. And some of those times the dude has happily walked away thinking he's won because his tone was flatter and his words were longer. Even if he had no idea what he was talking about. But there's more. Historically, individuals perceived as female have had less access to higher education than those perceived as male, therefore lacking the terminology and tools to level the playfield. Am I the one who's confused? Or have we crossed the time portal into the Middle Ages? Your statement might have made sense in the past. But this is 2020! We all have access to an education now, equal opportunities. So it is your fault if you don't understand what I am exposing. Oh, do we? Do we really? As previously discussed in this channel, no, we don't have equal opportunities. And what saying that does is shaming the very people you don't allow into your circle for not being in it. You're misplacing the blame. Even in the wonderful scenario in which we all have the same possibilities, academia is not the only path. And it's a path that lots of people decide not to take. Does that mean their voices are not to be heard? Ever? So we let everyone play doctor and lawyer. I'm sure you'll be delighted when the garbage truck driver does your surgery. No, academic speech and knowledge are important to the extent in which they fulfill a purpose. An oncologist probably knows a lot more about cancer than I do. That doesn't mean he shouldn't listen to my symptoms and concerns. A history professor is gonna know more about the Punic Wars than me. That doesn't mean he should dismiss me or belittle me because of it. And the garbage truck driver knows how to drive a garbage truck, and you don't. So stop disrespecting people's occupations. So what you're saying is we should all speak like babies all the time so we don't hurt anybody's feelings. Boo hoo. Oh, dude, you're starting to really get on my nerves. Using specific terminology when it's necessary is totally cool. Like if you're trying to explain to your colleague the specific shade of blue that a client requested for their logo. But I'm not going to start throwing around long words if I'm trying to get my grandma to understand my perspective on the penitentiary system. Feeling like you're a better brand of human being because you corrected someone's grammar, usually without having their context into account. It's not only ethically questionable, it's also bound to perpetuate classist and xenophobic attitudes and exclude the voices you want muffled. Because what if that person is speaking their second language? What if they have an accent? Are you still smarter and more educated than them? Does the architect design in my house using contractions make their technical abilities any worse? Because I don't think so. In conclusion, academic language can be classist, xenophobic and sexist, but it doesn't have to be. Language is a tool. Let's make sure we use it in the best way we can. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and share it with someone you think might need to hear it. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome content and click the little bell icon if you want to get notified whenever I upload something new, which is probably going to be next Friday. Bye!